Good morning, everyone. Good morning. So is anyone else attending from uh, the school community group? We'll just wait a moment because they did have three people on their list. We were just waiting a moment to see if there was anyone else joining on behalf of West Pembroke. In consideration of the time, I think we should get started. And if someone else joins, then we'll just receive them. So uh, good morning. I'm Jasmine Smith, the Permanent Secretary for the Ministry of Education. And I'm the lead on the history and legacy component of the rescoring process assessment meetings. And just a little background. In July 2023, the minister announced in a public meeting that the ministry would include a history and legacy component to the parish primary school decision rubric. The process to get us here today included input from the minister's history and legacy working group and the ministry's policy team. The minister learned through the consultation that the schools indicated that they did not have representation on the school location strategy team and that's the team that actually carried out the work and made a recommendation to the minister for which buildings would be selected as parish primary schools. The minister then committed to having representatives participate in the history and legacy component process, which is how we got to this point of having these meetings. So today, the purpose of this meeting is for the school community representatives um, from West Pembroke to actually share with us and provide information about the history and legacy related um, to their school. So we have an assessment team here and the team will actually rate that information on a scale of one to five. And there are four categories. Those categories were shared with the schools to, to send out to all of the their representatives and there's a maximum of 20 points. 
So at the end of this process, that information will be shared with the minister who then will make a final decision. He has explained that he will be sharing this information with his colleagues um, to get input before the final decision is made and they will be part of the process. So we have 55 minutes allocated to these me meetings. Um, other members of the assessment team are on the meeting today. Um, we have Dr. Kim Dismont Robinson. She is the Director of Community and Cultural Affairs. Then we have Carla Ingerman. She works for the Ar archives and is an archivist. And not on the meeting is David Northcott. He's a policy analyst with the Ministry of Home Affairs. He is not attending the meetings, but he his role is to ensure that we have been compliant with the process. So he will be reviewing all of the um, records of the meeting. Um, all of the meetings are recorded and the recording serves as the formal record of the meeting. So um, we can get on with the meeting. Um, some of the schools indicated they wanted to have presentations, they were preparing presentations, and others have indicated they just have general dialogue and they'll be sharing summaries with us. So um, I note that uh, you're the only person here for West Pembroke. Can you share your name with us? I think you're muted. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> My name is Janet Thomas. I taught at West Pembroke School for many years, 30 years in total. Oh. But that was a long time ago. And so I'll, I'll try to share as much as I can remember or um, feel comfortable in doing. Yes, it's very difficult yeah. when you're difficult when you're doing it at home and you have your interruptions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we understand. But we'll try our best. Now, what what are you asking of me now? Well, um, we had shared um, with the school to pass on information. We're looking for information about the relationship between history and legacy of the school and the vision for parish primary schools. So you indicated that you have been there for 30 years. Other um, information was the persons who amplified the ethos of the school and are have meaningful impact on the school community and or Bermuda. So you can share a little bit about the community, persons who came out of the school? Um, well, I was born in St. George's, came up to West Pembroke School as a student in uh, 1950 uh, something. And I stayed there, went off to an um, Barclay after that, Teachers College, and I came back to West Bengal School as a teacher. I was teaching in transition with a lady by the name of E1 Simmons that I, I did make a phone call to her because she was there much longer than I was, and I thought that she could share some history of the school. Where did it begin? When did it begin? And she indicated that West Pembroke School, she thinks came out of the St. Albans Sunday School and it was called the Painter School, but she couldn't give me the year. And then they, they came to West Pembroke in their location where they, they um, currently exist. And um, the school just grew. People loved West Pembroke School. And I went away, came back from Teachers College, and I taught there under Barrow Manger. And, and 
And we were like family. We were so connected with the community. People loved West Pembroke School. They thought of that school as a quality school, a school that was like a family and, and cared for the children in such a loving way. And the staff members we had, um, it was a one form school. This, the um, facility, it was a, just catered to a one form. Mm -hmm. So we had no assembly hall, we had no, um, um, all the other frills, but we made do. Mm -hmm. And um, I just, I just make, I did make a few notes. Um, I don't know if you want to know about the teachers that were there then, but we had some old stellar teachers, you know, the diehard. They, they just loved, loved what they were doing. And they showed it in their um, teaching. Um, we only had one main building at that point, and, but we had a talk shop. We, we, all our assemblies were no, not in an assembly hall, but we met in the corridor. And, um, and so that's that's the basics. But but West Pembroke was a, a very unique school, and we taught with our hearts. And as a result, many of the principals that came into our system came out of West Pembroke School. West Pembroke School was like a feeder school. We had we had the likes of Sheila Johnson at East End, Dorothy Williams at Francis Patton, Charlotte Mean at um, Harrington Son, Dick Dane, Yvonne Simmons at, at um, Central, Gina Tucker at Central, Abby Richardson at Somerset Primary, and Yours truly, I left West Pembroke School and I became principal at um, Southampton Glebe School. Um, West Pembroke was a place where parents, they longed for their children to come there. And as many would know, many times they even changed their addresses to get them in that school, <laughs> only to be turned away once you found out exactly where they and um, where they lived. But um, it had an excellent reputation. I, I recall when the Barclays um, exams came up and you know, you had to take an exam to get into Barclay. We would fill a whole class. They have four classes there. We would take a whole class our students, but and um, so maybe you can ask me some questions. But well, Miss Thomas, I see that Miss Griffin has joined us. Oh, uh, Miss Griffin, did did you want to just share? We were just um, talking. I gave an overview of how we got here today and what the purpose of this meeting is for the representation. <clears throat> um, representatives from West Pembroke to just share with us a little bit about the history and legacy component of the school, um, inclusive of like the relationship between the school and history and legacy, as well as anything about community um, to do with the school community involvement, um, persons who amplify the ethos of the school and has had a meaning, meaningful impact. And just generally, um, what I did not say, Ms. Thomas, um, the other thing on there was any awards internationally, locally, national awards that the school may have received. Good morning, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, Ms. Griffin. Okay, good morning, everyone. Um, I went to West Pembroke actually yesterday because mm -hmm. I had I had previously done some work um, when I was on staff there for the history of the school. And oh, we had okay. a fifth, I think it was the 50th year celebration. So I actually directed that. I knew that I knew that there was were documents there. 
Okay. Um, stemming from that and and back further um, to the inception of the school, actually. So I went searching yesterday and I did find some things. They were in the storage room, but um, I'll give you some background of myself. I taught at West Pembroke uh, for a total of 16 years. My my purpose was always to be able to teach at West Pembroke. I didn't attend the school myself, but my siblings did. By the time we moved into the community, I was already at Berkeley. But my younger siblings all oh, did go to West Pembroke School, so did my husband and his family. And I knew what the school meant in the community, much of, much of what Mrs. Thomas has just said. Um, as far as the early history of West Pembroke, that dates as far back as 1918. And I have found at the school the log books from mm -hmm. 198, the registration books and the log books by the principals from 1918. Mm -hmm. So all of that is at the school, beautifully handwritten <laughs> between 1918 and all up to the 1990s. Um, the school did open in 1918 and at St. Albans Hall on St. John's Road. The principal at the time was Rosa Butterfield and the number of students enrolled was 57. By the 80s, the, the highest um, enrollment was 411, wow. I think I saw that. But mm -hmm. um, in, in January 1919, Mr. Alliston Francis was appointed. And that was because Miss, Miss Butterfield went home sick one weekend and did not recover. Oh. So that was very unfortunate. So this Mr. Francis, Asselton Al Francis, in January of 1992, Mrs. Mildred Painter became the principal of St. Albans School. And during the 20s, the enrollment increased to approximately 100 students in classes one to seven. Additional classes were built and Woodlands became the kindergarten department for St. Albans School as the school was growing so much. Um, in January of 1946, West Pembroke School on the North Shore Road. That was when the new school was built on the North Shore Road. And the enrollment doubled then. And between 1946 and 1958, Mrs. Mildred Painter left to assume the principalship of Prosper Primary School. I know that because I attended Prosper Primary when it first opened up in the barracks, up in Prospect. And Mrs. Beryl Monjay, who was then a teacher at the Barclay Institute, was appointed principal of West Pembroke School. The original structure consisted of eight classrooms. In January 1967, Mrs. Mildred Painter opened. She opened the new unit to the south of the main building. Um, and that was four classrooms, boys and girls, laboratories, showers, an art room, an assembly hall with the stage, adjacent changing room, and the ceremony was conducted by Reverend Canon Jack Peel. Um, and I know that building well because I taught, taught in those primary three classes over there for a number of years. Phase one of the infant department was completed in June 1978. And I remember that because there were, and Mrs. Thomas may, may, may have been there then, I don't know, when um, yes, they I had was. some prefabs, mm -hmm. and these yeah. prefabs blew down, I think. Mm -hmm. I think in, in one of the hurricanes, I think we lost the prefabs. We did. And, yeah. And so that infant department was completed in June of 1978. And um, students were able to start using it in September of 1978. In June 1979, Mrs. Beryl Manjay retired as the principal of West Pembroke School. And in September 1979, Mrs. Davina Blakeney, who was a teacher at Padgett Primary, assumed the principalship. I actually did my practice teaching at West Pembroke School uh, in 1969 under Mrs. Alinda Cox, while Mrs. Manjay was, was um, the principal. And she was quite a person to be respected. 
Mm -hmm. um, very kind, well, but also very pardon. Very kind, but also very firm in what yeah. she expected. Um, the the in searching through. And I, I can't do it right now. Unfortunately, I was trying to get on my computer to the, do this so I could look at my phone at the same time, but my computer, mm -hmm. for some reason, I can't get it on Zoom on it. It keeps on updating. Mm -hmm. um, because I did record on my phone quite a few of the certificates over the years that West Pembroke has earned, both, um, both um, uh, locally and internationally, mm -hmm. um, having um, participated in just about every uh, organization in Bermuda that held something to do with uh, the Bermuda um, heritage celebrations or health uh, health um, initiatives, um, art shows, um, running the gamut. Uh, we also did, we were also one of the first schools that started to take um, young people in primary seven off the island to just give them a wider look at the world and, and take them on educational tours. Um, as I said, Mrs. Thomas has said, said a lot and a lot has to do with community and community. Um, we can come back, some families have actually have their fourth generation now at West Pembroke School. So it is, quite a community school. Um, and some of the some of the um, community pe people who have come out of West Pembroke, um, the parent chiefs or the whole parent chief family of 10. And um, <laughs> the parent chief was supposed to be here, but unfortunately doesn't look like he has made the meeting because um, he is off island, tried to get the message to him. But um, Dr. Malcolm Brock. Um, Dr. Youssef Morant. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, Karima Sarif, who is a, a part of the parent chief family, is a pharmacist. Um, we have quite a few nurses. We have uh, oh, lots of teachers. The current principal, of course, is a, is a former student of West Pembroke, who I taught. Mm -hmm. um, Dr. Brenwyn Smith. King, who was who is now the interim president of the mm -hmm. Bruna College, one wolf, my sister yeah. Chalzetta Simmons, who both serving in Supreme Court, um, Gina and Gita Blakeney, uh, mm -hmm. Michelle Brock, also Michelle Brock Jackson, she's executive vice president of Bermuda's um, Argus, mm -hmm. Suzanne, Suzanne Williams, Suzanne Williams, yes, yeah, Suzanne Williams, um. We have right next door, we have Scott Morton, who um, is a football coach, and Cal Blankendale, both in, very involved in sports. You know, that's just that's just a few of the people I'm sure, you know, if we set up, we can just a, a lot more, yeah. but very, very strong in the community and a very uh, strong legacy because, as I say, it, we have, are now down to some people in their fourth generation of um, students who have gone through West Pembroke School. Um, so uh, one thing I'm going to say is that out of this um, whole procedure with, with the school system, I am happy that this has happened because I think the legacy, the history and legacy of all the schools are very, very, very important. And I think that this is something that should be pursued for every school in Bermuda, that uh, the history and legacy is recorded. There's log books and attendance books at um, um, West Pembroke. We're in the storage room. Um, I know the the Barclay Institute has the same thing, and they're just in a storage room. Uh, and so one of these day, and in boxes, and one of these days, these things are going to be thrown out, and we are going to lose the history and legacy of the schools. So um, 
I would like to add that I think that this idea should be pursued in recording for time, the history and legacy of all of the schools in Bermuda. I would like to read West Pembroke's statement of philosophy, which I think fits right in with what we are trying to do today. We believe the child is the most important individual in the educative process, and that educators must ensure that policies, procedures, and et cetera, reflect the same. We believe too, the school is the second most important socialization agent, and that is, it is the responsibility of the school to provide the best learning environment for its students, to provide guiders who are mature, caring adults, sensitive and responsive, responsive to the physical, social, emotional, and cognitive needs of their students, thus producing responsible, self-reliant, functional adults in an ever-changing society. Another thing I would like to say is that mm -hmm. in speaking with some of the former teachers at West Pembroke School, mm -hmm. um, ooh, I'm sorry, I got, um, responses like, you can feel the spirit of the school in the walls. And I remember one time Dr. Marjorie Bean came into the front door and she just stood in the whole, the front hallway and walked up and down. And she said, I can feel this. This is a wonderful school. You know, she just had that feeling. And, and I think just about everybody who attends West Pembroke, who has taught in West Pem at West Pembroke, feels that way about the school. Yesterday, from, from the first time I ever entered West Pembroke to right up until yesterday, um, you just feel the spirit of the school. It's a wonderful place to be. The children are happy. They're as happy now as they were in the days that I taught there and, and when my siblings attended, okay? Uh, one teacher who was originally from the UK, um, she compared her her experience in the UK with teaching at West Pembroke and, you know, talked about how far, how much superior West Pembroke was as far as the standards and, you know, just the school environment, the whole school environment, you know, and the keeping up the standards have always been very, very important to everyone who enters that school. So, um, uh, like I said, most, um, the new principal of the school has uh, has uh, um, attended West Pembroke. She and her sisters, um, who are all doing extremely well. I should have, I could have mentioned them also as people who have done extremely well in our our community. So, um, I don't know. That's it. Well, Miss Griffin, Hello. thank. Oh, we're still here. <laughs> <laughs> and thank thank you for sharing that information. Um, you should know that the Minister's History and Legacy Working Group, um, they will be legislated to be a formal um, government advisory committee, but their role is to capture all of the history um, for all of the schools in Bermuda. So mm -hmm. that is well underway the, for fr formalizing them. So, you know, I've made a separate lo note that those records are available for when that school, um, the work for that school is carried mm -hmm. out. Mm -hmm. And and you've you've shared some great information, uh, Ms. Thomas. Did you want to add anything else? No, I think that um, Mrs. Griffin's covered it all. She, she had the key to all the secrets, <laughs> and she's done a good job. The, I left teaching, my well, goodness, nineteen eighty five. Mm -hmm. So she was still in it up to a few years 90, ago. Ninety nine. And pardon? I was. I left in ninety nine. Okay, I left mm -hmm. in eighty five. But you did a stellar job. And the I even learned some information. Mm -hmm. Did you? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. 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 So, and, and seeing um, Dr. Dismond there, I know her mother went there too. 
Diane and Rhonda, we all were there and we all had a good time. And, and Michael, so we all had a good time. So if I had to do it again, I think I'll change my address too, so my kids could go there. <laughs> um, to, I'm just going to open up to uh, members of the assessment team to see if they have any questions. Um, Kim, do you have any questions? Uh, just one question for a clarification point. Um, Ms. Thomas, you had mentioned um, that at one point it was called the Painter School. I just wondered, was that painter like the surname painter or painter like painting? No, the painter, a surname. Okay. Surname. Yes. I think, I think maybe that, that, that was maybe because... Mildred Painter. I yeah, think because was, of Mildred yes. Painter, yes. Okay, yeah, just curious about that, actually. That was, okay. Thank you. Uh, Carla, from an archives perspective, I'm sure this is exciting for you, but do you have any questions? <laughs> I don't have any questions, but Ms. Griffin, the Bermuda Archives are happy to take these records off your hands. We will catalog them, put them um, in the repository and keep them safe forever. So you don't have to hold on to them. They won't go bad and you can refer to them whenever you want. That's just throwing it out there. That's where, 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 where can they go again? I'm sorry. I know not many people know about us, but we, the Bermuda government does have an archive and we keep really good, um, we take really good care of the country's records and you can mm -hmm. leave your school's records with us. We can come get them if you want and take care of them for you. Mm -hmm. I'll, speak to the, I'll speak to the principal about it. Okay. Yeah, and the, I'll, I'll also the remind the principal. Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'll, Ka Carla, I'll also remind the principal because yeah. Ms. Griffin also said that she knew Barkley had the same information. Barclay so I'll has, go yeah. out to both, mm -hmm. both schools and I'll just let them know that the archives is available and those documents can be safeguarded. Yeah. All right, ladies. Well, you know, um, we're happy that you joined us. If there's nothing else, um, we can end the meeting, but we certainly are happy that you joined us and we've received this information. Um, as I said earlier, the information will be shared with the minister and decisions on the parish primary schools are with the minister. He will share with his cabinet colleagues and they, I believe they're gonna make the decision together. But, you know, we're just happy that you joined us today and thank you for taking up your time. Thank with you everyone I, with, with everyone I spoke to, <laughs> the basic message was don't you all, don't, don't you dare. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, we got that. <laughs> <laughs> it is a it's a wonderful school. It really is. It is a, really. the pride the pride of Bermuda. It was held up back the pride then, of Bermuda. It, it was wonderful back then, and it still is. It still is. So, uh, Miss Thomas, I'll, I'll just let you know as well that uh, Diane's granddaughter went to the school as well. My oldest. Oh, wonderful! <laughs> <laughs> well, living next door when, when they live just next door to the school. <laughs> History goes on. Beautiful. All the best to her. All right. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. You're quite welcome. Okay. Have a good day. Okay. You see. Bye. 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 All right. We'll see you in a little bit. Okay. Thank you.